show that f of x equals x cubed plus 1 and g of x equals the quantity x minus 1 to the 1 third power are inverse functions. When we raise something to the 1 third power, that's just another way of taking a cube root. So this really means the cube root of x minus 1, which I think you're probably more familiar with. Again, let's take a look at these compositions of functions, f of g of x and g of f of x. For f of g of x, this is going to be f of the cube root of x minus 1. And when we substitute that into f, that's going to give us the cube root of x minus 1 cubed plus 1. Now, if we take the cube root of something and then cube it, we end up with what we have inside. This gives us x minus 1. And then we have the plus 1 on the outside. To show you how this works, I want to look at some numerical examples. If we look at the cube root of 8 cubed or the cube root of negative 27 cubed. The cube root of 8 is just 2, and then 2 cubed gives us 8. The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3, and if we cube that, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3, we get negative 27. In essence, cubing something and taking a cube root are inverse functions. We're just looking at a more complicated version in this problem. Anyways, once we cancel out the cube root and the cubing, we're left with x minus 1 plus 1. We can remove the parentheses, and when we do that, oops, when we do that, the constant terms cancel, and we're left with x. Let's take a look at the other composition. This is going to be g of x cubed plus 1. When we substitute x cubed plus 1 into g, this is going to be the cube root of x cubed plus 1 minus 1. Now, x cubed plus 1 minus 1, the 1's are going to cancel, and we're just going to be left with x cubed. And the cube root of x cubed is just x, due to similar reasons from what we saw before. So in this situation, both of the compositions of functions leave us with x as a final result, and that means that these are, in fact, inverse functions.